have been working very hard to pull Kenya out of a debt trap. Mr. Let, let, no, let me just allow me yeah. because you know we need to contextualize this finance bill. It is easy, uh, Joe. It is easy for us as a country to say, let us reject the finance bill. That's fine. And I have graciously said we will we will drop the finance bill, but it has huge consequences. It means we will not confirm the JSS teachers, 46,000 of them. It means we cannot support our farmers with two billion shillings for us to make sure that farmers get a fair return of 50 shillings per kilogram, uh, per, per kilo of their milk. It means we cannot sort out the coffee debts. It means we cannot support the cherry fund. It means we cannot sort out the um, uh, debts of farmers in, in, uh, in, in, in Mumias. It also means that we will continue to import potatoes from Europe when we have potatoes in his village. You just told me you in Kimana. Mr. We have potatoes Mr. in Mr. Yandarwa. President, we have, we have uh, onions all over the place. That may well be. I think the problem has been these are people who are saying they haven't been listened to. You only listen because you said on that night, on that Wednesday night, that is the moment you said that you had realized, Mr. President, that Kenyans did not want anything to do with that bill. And one would wonder, how can that be, Mr. President? And, and you have had all these presentations that have been made. Did it have to take demonstrations and sadly loss of lives for you to come to a point where you'd realize what your people, the people that voted for you, are saying that I think is what the young people are asking. Let me tell you, uh, Joe. Members of parliament are representatives of the people, elected. They are not fools and they are not mad. And I want to say one day Kenya will know that the MPs who voted yes are the true heroes of Kenya. Those are the people who saw the opportunity for us to unchain our country from debt trap and take our country to the future. Let me tell you, Joe, and I want to say this to the people of Kenya, that my plan was to make sure that in the next three years, maximum four years, we have a balanced budget where Kenya is not the country where we are today. Let me uh, tell you, gentlemen, and I want to tell the people of Kenya the following. We are in a very difficult financial position. This is something that the people of Kenya must understand, and that is why I am happy that we have a crisis. This crisis will help us be candid and speak to each, uh, to each other properly and contextualize where we are. We raised this year 2.3 trillion from our taxes. Of that, 2.3 trillion, 1.1 trillion went to debt financing. 1 trillion went to salaries. What did we do? We had to go and borrow to pay the counties. We had to go and borrow to fund our education. We had to go and borrow to fund now. The, the funding gap we have done with the finance bill going down is that instead of borrowing 600 billion, we are going to borrow 600 billion plus 346 billion, that is close to a trillion. And let me tell you, uh, my good friends, and I want us to be honest with ourselves, this is not how a country will get to a status where we are proud of our nation. This is not how we are going to, this is not how we are going to grow. Uh, and that is why, and that is why, mm. Linus, this situation, this crisis is a very important inflection point that we can sit yeah. together, assess, let us agree, and I have, I have no problem. Let us agree. Yeah. Do we continue borrowing? Uh, and let me give you the statistics. Uh, when in 2013, Linus, just allow me one minute, please, with a lot of respect. Okay. In 2013, the debt stock of Kenya was 1.8 trillion. For 10 years, 
that increased five times to 11 trillion, 10 point something trillion. We built a lot of roads. We connected a lot of electricity. We did many things in 10 years, but we were doing it on debt. Today, we don't have the luxury to borrow because we have reached the limit. And today, yes. let me finish. Okay. Today, all the money we borrowed from 2013 is maturing. That is why the biggest challenge that we have as a nation is that we are spending 1.1 trillion every year of taxes we collect from ordinary Kenyans to pay debt and not the whole debt, That's interest, interest alone. Yeah. Interest you know? principal comes to 1.8 trillion this year. So, my good friends, and yet you want to tell me, William Ruto, don't collect domestic taxes. Go borrow more money. No, Mr. That's, president. That's not what they're saying, uh, that, uh, president. Uh, what, 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 that is, what, is, what is the alternative? Yeah, yeah, and I just wanted to come to one. No, what, is, what is the alternative? Just, yeah. just help me there. Yeah. Because there are, there are only two things you can do. Either you raise money from taxes, or you borrow, period. Yes. There, 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 there is no magic there, here. There are Kenyans, Your Excellency, right now, who do not listen to all that. Yes. They are not interested in that. That's okay, but, but that's the reality. Then, but, but if, if you are not, in, if, you, if you do not want to listen uh, to hang reality. On excellency. Hang, on, hang on, Your Excellency, because I need you to address a very important issue here. And that is one of a trust deficit. There are Kenyans who watch you, Your Excellency, and I don't know whether you are aware that they don't trust what you say. They don't believe what you say. Are you aware, Your Excellency, for example, that a lot of Kenyans increasingly don't associate the truth with you? That is your assessment because you have never associated the truth with me <laughs> from the beginning. No, no, there's, the there's quite a number of Kenyans. No, no I mean, that well, is, well, uh, that is, that is we, asked, it bother we you? asked people before we came that's here to give the assessment. Yeah. And many of those that responded to me directly mm. and to even our platforms on KTN News, on Spice FM, on NTV, on Citizen, and we were asking them, what question should we ask the president this evening? And the one thing that many of them were saying is, when will he stop lying? So it's not Linus. That can he tell us the truth this time? Let me, yeah. let me say the following. I told the people of Kenya that I would reduce the prices of fertilizer from 7,000 to 2,500. I don't know how that is a lie because they buy it at 2,500. Okay. You, you, I told the they are, I, I told the people of Kenya we are going to have we're going to have a housing pro program. A housing program is underway in Kenya. I I can tell you, Linus, that. Whether you believe me or not, facts will not change. Yeah, and facts I, are not changed by who says it. And, and, and allow me facts to, and allow me to step back a bit, Your Excellency. And facts yeah. are very yes. stubborn. Allow me to step back a bit. Yes. And what I'll do is we'll play clips, just a little combination of clips of yourself speaking not too long ago, and I want us to listen to that. I'll stand out of the way because you said it's, it, it's me that doesn't share the truth with you. And I would like you to respond to yourself, to the clips that we are going to uh, play. But, but you see, uh, you see uh, Linus. Let's watch that, Your Excellency. I think, Linus, yeah. you, uh, you, you don't bring clips that are in a biased way. You know, you select maybe uh, something that has not happened. No. Can, can you be fair and select clips? across the board, what I said and has been done, and what I said and maybe has not been done. Are there so, so let's watch that. Yeah. Let's, maybe you can watch that. Yeah. These people don't understand the damage they are doing to the people and the economy of Kenya. Kwa hii taxes wanaongeza usiku na mchana. Na mimi nataka ni wauliza watu wa hapa manga. Tafadhali. 